Memoirs of a Geisha numbers among many people's favourite books, and despite today's subject matter, I can't deny the prose is well crafted and the story is incredibly engaging. I loved it when I first read it not so long ago. But what many people don't know is behind the intrigue and romance, there is a real woman whose own life and experiences have been woven into the book, without her consent, in fact, with quite the opposite of it. After watching the movie adaptation of Memoirs, I did some research and found out about the many controversies surrounding both book and movie. I also discovered a remarkable woman named Minako Iwasaki. She allowed the author of Memoirs of a Geisha, Arthur Golden, to interview her as research for the book, under the impression the story being written would be a perfectly respectful and accurate portrayal of geisha culture. She also had just one condition for this interview, that her name never be attached to the book. You see, this iconic part of Japanese culture has remained a mysterious and secretive world since its beginning, and there is an unspoken rule that geisha never speak publicly about their work. This has caused many misconceptions about what a geisha is to be widespread, and these stereotypes were only pushed further by memoirs of a geisha. Worse still than the inaccuracies was Golden directly thanking Minako in the acknowledgments. In Japan, the book was received at best as another Western attempt to portray Japan as some exotic land, and was far from a bestseller. Minako received backlash from her own former industry thanks to the acknowledgments, and lost friendships. When she called Golden out for this, she was even sent death threats for criticising the book. She ended up suing the author in 2001 for breach of contract and defamation of character, eventually settling out of court in 2003. In 2002, Minako published her own memoirs, which I highly recommend, to clear up the misinformation and set her story straight. I was entirely shocked by how much I related to and adored Geisha of Guyon, Minako's memoir. Not only is it wonderfully written and a page-turner, but the educational quality of it is amazing. Minako is the first Geisha to ever come forward with their story publicly. She explains the intricacies of her former profession so clearly and keeps you interested throughout. Aside from getting key parts of the culture wrong, Memoirs of a Geisha also used parts of Minako's real life for storylines, another reason she stated for suing the author. This is the true story behind Memoirs of a Geisha. Minako was the most popular geiko of her time, geiko being the term almost identical to geisha that is used for women of arts working in Kyoto specifically. She had a 15-year-long career, entertaining many celebrities and even royals throughout it, before shocking everybody by retiring at the height of her success when she was only 29. She was born under a different name, Masako Tanaka, on the 2nd of November 1949 to a family descended from aristocrats on her father's side and pirates turned physicians on her mother's. She was exposed to many of the arts she would become familiar with in her career from an early age. Her father painted textiles for kimono, and both her parents were artistic people. However, the family was far from rich, and her father was supporting most of his relatives on top of his own growing family. In Kyoto, there are districts known as karyokai, meaning the flower and willow world. These are places dedicated to aesthetic pleasures, and are where geiko and the geiko in training called maiko live and work. Fascinating relationships exist between all the different businesses that operate in the karyokai. Okia, or geisha houses, have special relationships with the ochaya, or tea houses, and many other businesses besides, such as hairdressers, kimono makers, and dressers. Minako's father was struggling to support his family, and it was suggested he speak to the owner of an okia, and he ended up finding positions for both of his daughters, who were ten and eight at the time. The eldest, Yeiko, became an apprentice at the Iwasaki Okia, one of the best okia in the Gion Kobu district, while the younger daughter was apprenticed in another district. A few years later, another daughter, Kuniko, went to work as an assistant at the Iwasaki Okia. Yeiko would be embittered for the rest of her life over having to leave her family and train to be a geiko. Minako wasn't even born when this was happening, and as a child she believed her parents only had eight children, and would learn later on that she had three other sisters. When Minako was three, her family was visited by the proprietor of the Iwasaki Okia, Madame Oima. Madame Oima took an instant shine to Minako, then called Masako, and urged the family to consider letting her visit the Okia and see if she liked it. Madame Oima was eager to find an heir or Atotori to take over the Okia after she died, and she believed Minako could be the one. 
She was persistent in her requests, and soon Minako started making visits to the Okia. Before long, she began to stay overnight, and then decided she wanted to stay for good. Minako stresses that she was never sold to the Okia, as her fictional counterpart Sayuri is in Memoirs of a Geisha. In Memoirs, Sayuri is sold by a man named Mr. Tanaka, the same last name as Minako's family, and while it is one of the most common last names in Japan, one has to wonder if this wasn't deliberate. Another inaccuracy in Memoirs is the way in which the apprentices are treated. Something I found fascinating when reading of Minako's earliest days in the Okia is the reverence with which she was treated as a potential Atotori, and while her own elder sister Yeiko was often hateful towards her, and another Geiko also named Masako was at times rude, Minako was never exposed to any truly harsh treatment, and certainly was never beaten as Sayuri and the other apprentices are in memoirs. Even though the fictional tale is set a few decades before Minako's time, she herself said that a geiko's body is precious and must always be taken care of. Beating an apprentice would be unthinkable because it risks injury or disfigurement. When Minako was in school, she kept it a secret that she was on the basketball team, as she never would have been given permission to for fear of injury. The villain of Memoirs of a Geisha is Hatsumomo. This character seems to be based on Yeiko and Masako, the older Geiko, and of course the many other jealous women Minako had to deal with. Despite the close female relationships being at the core of Geisha life, there is no doubt about the amount of rivalry too. Minako and Masako ended up having a deep affection for each other in the end, with Minako calling her mother and Masako acting as one. When Minako was legally adopted as the Atatori, her name was changed from Masako Tanaka to Minako Iwasaki. In order to become a geiko, every young girl must go through a rigorous daily schedule for many years. Dance is among the most important skills to learn, and Minako developed a passion for it. In fact, it was that passion that drove her to become a geiko, despite her naturally introverted personality being at odds with the requirements of her work. At the age of six, Minako began attending the Inoue School, the best traditional school of dance in all of Japan. She was trained by the Iyamoto herself, or Grand Mistress of the school. The Iyamoto of the Inoue school is the most important person in Japan's dance world, and under her instruction, Minako became one of, if not the best dancer of her generation. At the same time, Minako attended ordinary school, took calligraphy and music lessons, and had dance classes every day. This constant pace of activity would continue almost without ceasing until she retired at 29. In this culture, everything depends on the hierarchy of seniority among the women. The owners of Okia and Ochayas are always referred to as mother or aunt, and Maiko and Geiko are referred to as Onisan, or older sister, by anyone who begins working after they have. Age makes no difference to this system, as seniority is gained through status. Every Maiko has a specific Onisan assigned to her. The older Geiko becomes a mentor and guide to her younger sister, smooths out any conflicts with teachers and peers, and oversees her progress in all the necessary skills a Geiko must possess. She prepares her for debut and accompanies her to her first engagements, guiding her through etiquette and introducing her to potential clients. These relationships between older and younger sisters can have quite the effect on Maiko's success, and so Minako is disappointed to be assigned her actual older sister, the difficult Yeiko, who had already shown her dislike for her younger sister. Yeiko had arrived at the Iwasaki Okia at 10 years old in 1935. She was going to be the Atotori and debuted as a Maiko in 1938. Yeiko was charming and beautiful, and the Okia gave her a magnificent and extremely expensive debut, but she was miserable in a world of etiquette, lessons, and a tight schedule. She didn't understand her parents' financial situation and had no sympathy for them. Instead, she bore them utter resentment for what she saw as selling her into a life she didn't want. Plenty of other girls from good families who had fallen on hard times were in the same position, and many considered themselves fortunate to be able to continue practicing the beautiful arts they had learned at home and wearing expensive kimono. This life also offered them financial independence and good marriage prospects, but Yeiko was undisciplined and refused to improve her skills. During the Second World War, the Karaukai districts closed, and the Geiko and Maiko found jobs working mostly in factories. In 1944, without repaying her debts to the Okia, Yeiko announced she was going to marry and move to Osaka. 
She was not seen or heard from again until almost a decade later. Her husband had been unfaithful to her and lost all their money. She had two sons and no prospects, and so she decided to reclaim her position at the Iwasaki Okia. This was unheard of. Once a geiko retires, that is it. To come back would mean spending more money on another debut, and there was no way she could ever be at Otori again after her abandonment of the Okia during its hardest times. During a fight over this between Yeiko and Madame Oima, the Okia's owner, it was revealed that one of Yeiko's younger sisters had just been apprenticed, and that Madame Oima was desperate to apprentice Minako as well. Yeiko stormed off with this information to her parents' house. That day she killed two birds with one stone by leaving her sons in the care of her parents, making her free to move back into the Okia with its women-only rules, and she knew what she could do to convince Madame Oima to take her back. She returned to the Iwasakis with the promise that she would get Minako to join. Yeiko was permitted to return and start working again, but still her attitude did not improve. I find it fascinating to look at photos of modern-day geisha after learning about the dedication and planning it takes from so many people to even get them ready each day. The only men who are permitted in the innermost parts of an okia are the dressers. Kimono and the sash that is tied around the middle called an obi can weigh a lot, and to get to Geiko ready takes skill and strength, which is why men are preferred in this role. Dressers get to know each of their clients' bodies in detail, adjusting how they tie the obi and arrange the other garments accordingly. When fully dressed as a maiko, Minako's clothes weighed 44 pounds. Every day, on top of engagements, lessons, appointments and their private lives, there are many social calls to be made to keep up the important relationships the whole system depends on. Minako was taken on these afternoon visits by Madame Oima from a young age, going to the various teachers and tea house proprietors whom they owed gratitude to, among other businesses. Geiko are also expected to research the clients they will entertain that evening, and their day only ends sometimes into the early hours of the next morning. For most of her career, Minako survived on four or less hours of sleep. Tragedy struck in 1960 when one of Yeiko's sons drowned in a canal near Minako's parents' house. Yeiko hated Minako even more after this and told her she wished it was her who had died. Not wanting to leave her other son in her parents' care, Yeiko broke the women-only rule and moved her son Mamoru into the Iwasaki Okia, as well as having boyfriends to stay the night. Mamoru was 15 and Minako was 12, and soon he began to harass her and eventually tried to assault her, but was caught in the act just in time by Minako's sister Kuniko, who flew into a rage. Minako had to stay in another okia for the next fortnight, while Yeiko and Mamoru were being moved out, but this was not the last time Yeiko would cause her younger sister trouble. Mother Sakaguchi, the owner of the okia Minako stayed at, oversaw Minako's artistic progress and was a close associate of the Iwasaki okia. She was furious with Yeiko's behaviour and took matters into her own hands. She had Yeiko banned from dancing for three years, and the Iyamoto of the Inoue school agreed. Yeiko was also forbidden to enter any okia associated with the Iwasakis, nor could she send gifts or do the customary greetings and ritual visits. She was also not allowed anywhere near Minako, and was to give up all the duties of an older sister in everything but name. This made sure no one, especially not Minako, was subject to any scandal or dishonour. In order to become a Maiko, each girl has to pass a dance examination at the Inoue school. Minako received the highest score. From then on, she wore the hairstyle of a Maiko and had to sleep with her neck resting on a wooden pillow. One scene that is accurate in Memoirs of a Geisha is the circle of rice being put around the pillow to make sure the Maiko does sleep properly. If not, she must go back to the hairdresser with rice in her hair the next day. In the traditional Japanese calendar, there are 28 seasons, and for each one, different hair ornaments and patterns of kimono are worn. Minako debuted as a Maiko at the age of 15, and thereafter had no academic schooling. This was one of the things she spoke out against in later years. She disliked the lack of options Geiko were faced with in the outside world, with no way to support themselves without the proper qualifications. What would they do if they left the Karaukai? Geiko are supposed to entertain the rich and cultured, sometimes even world leaders, and yet they are not taught any academic subjects or languages. This dissatisfaction with the system led Minako to leave 15 years later. Before debuting as a junior Maiko, one becomes a Minarai, accompanying other Geiko and Maiko to engagements and learning by watching them. 
Minako's debut was a spectacular affair, with the finest kimono and hair ornaments made especially and no expense spared. Maiko wear a type of kimono called hikizuri. It reveals more of the back of their neck and has a longer train than an ordinary kimono. Maiko also wear a much longer obi and have to balance the weight of their costume on six-inch high shoes called okobo. Lining the streets from the Iwasaki Okia all the way to the Ochaya where Minako would attend her first ozashiki or dinner party were hundreds of fans and well-wishers. Even before debut, Minako had attracted attention. That night at the Ozashiki, she met the American director Elia Kazan. Ozashiki make up most of a geiko's engagement schedule, and a successful one might attend several per night and even be paid for a full hour when they only stopped by for a few minutes. They also attend private dinners and events, and the only time they are allowed to eat the food is when they are invited to lunch. Not just anyone can attend an Ozashiki or book a geiko. In order to go to an ochaya, you must be introduced by a trusted client, and the same rule applies to okiyas. A common misconception is that geisha only entertain men and are some kind of courtesan. This stereotype was solidified by memoirs of a geisha too. In fact, ozashiki parties are often hosted by women, and geiko entertaining families is quite common. Many cultured parents take their children to an ochaya to further their education, and when they are older they sometimes even get jobs working there to build a closer relationship with the establishment and learn how everything works. Soon after her debut, Minako was chosen for the annual poster for the Kimono Dealers Association, as well as being the centerfold photo in the Miyako Adori program. The Miyako Adori means the cherry dances, and is a series of public performances given in April. It is a big tourist event and coincides with the cherry blossoms appearing. Minako was warned having two such honours in her first year as a Maiko might attract malice from the other girls, and it did. The very next day at dance class, all the other girls completely ignored her, as Minako had actually replaced another Maiko for the Kimono Dealers Association photo. Incidents like this kept happening. An older geiko once stuck the hot end of her cigarette into Minako's hand, right in front of a client at an ozashiki. Geiko would tease Minako and try to trick her, and her own older sister Yeiko did the opposite of what an anasayan is supposed to by disparaging her to clients. One time she was dragged about on the floor by a customer who'd been put up to it by the other geiko, who all thought it was hilarious and her accessories were always mysteriously disappearing. Minako vowed to become the best dancer she possibly could in the hope of turning malice into admiration, and when she gained enough popularity to do so, she decided to help those who didn't like her by requesting her clients to invite certain geiko to Ozashiki, thus earning her rival's gratitude. On top of the treatment by other geiko, Minako received street harassment from men on her way to engagements, eventually having to take taxis instead of walking for her safety. One night, she did meet a kind chairman of an electric company, like the chairman in Memoirs. Yeiko had been saying horrible things about Minako to Nozashiki, and when she went to her next appointment, she was visibly upset. The chairman, named Jiro Ushio, managed to cheer her up. It's small things like this that seem to have too many parallels with Memoirs to be ignored. She claimed in her lawsuit that Arthur Golden had taken and changed parts of her real life. Another inaccuracy was the way Muzoage, the selling of a Maiko's virginity, is portrayed. In the book, it is an essential part of becoming a fully-fledged geiko, and something every Maiko must do. Muzoage did happen at one point, but was never a requirement to graduate to geiko status. One famous geisha, Sadayako, sold hers to the first Prime Minister of Japan for a record high amount, but it was never the norm for geisha. Minako did not go through this, and by the time she became a full geiko, it was illegal. Minako quickly became the most popular Maiko in Japan, and it's not hard to see why. Even by Geiko standards, she was busy, and was nicknamed the Homing Pigeon by her Okia. These are her own words on her first six months as a Maiko. On 15th February, I went into rehearsals for my first Miyako Adori. I became a Maiko on 26th March. The Miyako Adori opened on April 1st, seven days later, and ran for a solid month. Then I danced in a series of special performances at the new Kabukiza Theatre in Osaka for the month of May, and as soon as that was finished I was straight into her rehearsal for the Rokogai performances in June. 
On top of this, Minako would attend as many Ozashiki parties as possible, often getting to sleep at only 2 or 3 a.m. and rising at 6. After 8 a.m., her day was full of activity. This hectic pace took its toll on her health, and just after the June performances ended, Minako had to have an operation for acute appendicitis. After only 10 days of rest, she was back to rehearsing for the next series of summer dances. Surprisingly, the dancers in these performances don't get paid that much considering that they are the main attraction, another issue Minako had with the system. Despite this, at one point she was earning around a quarter of a million a year and was booked a year and a half in advance. A few years after her appendicitis, Minako fainted and was brought to the hospital, where it was discovered that her blood pressure was extremely high and one of her kidneys had stopped working due to bacteria from the tonsillitis she didn't even know she had. She had a tonsillectomy that left her unable to speak, eat or drink for over a week, but she was soon back at work. It was around this time Minako began a relationship with an actor named Shintaro Katsu, who was married but told her he would get a divorce. They were together for years before Minako broke it off after realising he wasn't planning on leaving his wife after all. Later in her career as a geiko, she appeared in commercials and magazines, even coining a catchphrase in one of her ads. She continued to express her frustration with many aspects of the industry and became more disillusioned with it, losing her passion for everything but dance. Towards the end of her career as a geiko, she opened a club in 1977 and tried her best to make reforms to the karaokai, but all of her complaints fell on deaf ears. After the death of Mother Sakaguchi, one of her closest mentors, she decided she'd had enough. She went to the Iomoto of Inoue School and announced that she was going to be retiring on the 25th of July 1980. Mentally and physically, she had exhausted herself. Everyone begged her to reconsider, but nobody offered to make any changes to the parts of the system she found to be unworkable. After her retirement, 70 other geiko left as well, and yet still no changes were made. Minako went on to become an art dealer and married an artist, with whom she had one daughter in 1983. There's so much more from her memoirs I've left out of this video because I want to encourage you all to read it for yourselves. I found it to be incredibly moving and fascinating, as well as extremely readable. I believe I read it in three days. I have the utmost respect for Minako, whose strength and perseverance have greatly inspired me, and I wish her well and thank her for telling her story and letting us into her world. I will leave you with a quote from Minako herself. Stab the body and it heals, but injure the heart and the wound lasts a lifetime. <laughs>